everybody and welcome to this special on Jupiter's conjunction with Uranus um, which are both in Aries at the moment. Remember all the horoscopes are based, um, upload are always based on constellational Vedic astrology. So in Western astrology I think Jupiter's in Taurus but in Vedic astrology it's in Aries. So yeah I'm going to take a deep dive in the way that I do looking at it from every angle. So Jupiter's conjunction to Uranus starts on the 15th of April at 8.59 a.m. Just in case you want to do a special uh, meditation on that day as we bring in this energy. Then there's that conjunction at 3.27 a.m. on the 21st of April. And then it leaves on the 26th of April at 8.43 p.m. So this is when it gets out of that 7. I use a 10 degree or but it's still going to be affecting us right up until, say, the middle of May. And um, this is the only time when Jupiter touches Uranus this year. So this um, conjunction happens once every 14 or so years. So I think the last time this happened was 2010. So some of you may look back at the things that you were doing what you started um, in 2010 that may come to the forefront of your mind as well during this time so in so Jupiter represents expansion growth opportunities you know the deeper meanings in life you know whether we're looking at it from a logical philosophical aspect or that deeper intuitive spiritual kind of perspective Uranus you know represents innovation change and sudden events Jupiter represents, um, um, you know, the ninth house, Sagittarius, which is a mutable fire energy. Also, on the esoteric level, Jupiter rules the eleventh house and Aquarius as well, and it's the co-ruler of Pisces energy as well. Uranus on the esoteric level rules the seventh house, and um, you know, Venus and Libra are normally associated with that house as well. So the shape of the chart, um, intuitively, as I read it, it's in a pyramid shape and then there's sort of like a smaller pyramid at the bottom of it. So it's about the building blocks that we are taking to expand our individuality because Uranus represents our uniqueness on that individual level and the ways that we're open to non-conforming and using our, you know, detaching from our sort of like problems in the healthiest ways and working towards self um, liberation you know as we grow into adulthood and decide to take responsibility for you know the things that we accept in our life and the things that we build in our life and obviously Jupiter gives us this sort of like um, optimistic energy this growing energy that makes us you know seek out the tools and resources that we need to grow so when Uranus and Jupiter come together in this conjunction, it's in the 28th degree of Aries. So the main energy is unexpected breakthroughs or disruptions in various aspects of our life. So now I'm just going to talk a bit about what Jupiter and Uranus represents in astrology. And I'm going to use Noel Till's book. Um, he's an astrologer who's um, passed away, but he's been very instrumental in my sort of like um, practical astrology as well as Dame Radar, but in this instance I'm using no till. So anyway, Jupiter is the primal kind of, you know, masculine energy of the sun, sort of like the mother of the moon. It's kind of like the energy that kind of overstands and oversees our sort of like advancement. So it brings knowledge, enthusiasm and honour and opportunity. Jupiter kind of represents our fortune, our inheritance. And it's not always physical inheritance from earthly things like our parents and money and that. It can be a spiritual sort of like um, inheritance as well. And it places, um, you know, emphasis on the higher mind and us, you know, looking into the deeper meanings of life and using things like law and spirituality and religion to sort of like expand our mind to travel the mind you know it represents physical travel but on the spiritual plane or even on the mental plane it represents mental sort of like travel the things that we may think or do to expand uh, the way that we sort of like you know view the world so when Jupiter comes together with Uranus, it can make us more um, charitable, wanting to be social, 
activist kind of you know setting up social enterprises doing things that benefit humanity but negatively it can lead to us wasting our energies we try and take on too much you know we we can have an influx of ideas and jupiter can expand it making us think we can walk on water sort of thing so it's very important while jupiter conjuncts uranus and the intentions that you set that you make solid plans and you be realistic about the time it's going to take for you to achieve your goals as well jupiter's in aries as well if we'll plan so it's going to stay in aries for i think the next month so if we are prepared to look at the bigger details as well as the smaller details as well and take the opportunities that come our way right now and prepare you know get the tools if we need to go back to school if we need to watch loads of videos and podcasts read lots of books you know whatever it is if we need to meditate whatever it is we need to prepare to you know reach our goals this is what we need to do and it's in this preparation that will bring the highest rewards so uranus it's sort of like the awakener in us it kind of you know allows us to become willful to become self-aware to sort of be inspired as well to be open to new ideas but negatively it can lead to unexpected change and separation and just things that we wish didn't happen but on the positive end it allows us to become more focused more strategic in the way that we look at life and you know being open to using newness and breaking free from tradition to bring you know transformation in our life so uranus when it's mixed with jupiter allows us to be more intensified in our ideas and to use our intellect or intuition to be more open to sort of like being sort of compassionate to ourselves and others as well we allow ourselves to be open to change so jupiter normally lives in the ninth house of changing our beliefs uranus is in the eleventh house of changing the ways that we interact in groups but when uranus is in aries it allows us to focus on our individual genius our individual talents and be innovative in the ways that we think about ourselves so it can boost our um, self-esteem allows us to become more willful and determined in reaching our goals and to take long-term action in gaining recognition and breaking away from conformity to be an individual so Uranus in Aries supports us in becoming that individual and that's the best use of this energy during this time at the exact time of the conjunction Jupiter Uranus are both in the second house so this can bring sudden changes in our income for some of you your resources your money and time will be there one minute and the next minute gone or you may get unexpected money from somewhere as well or come up with original money making ideas at this time as well and also you know something that you may own unusual possession so this can be a material thing or something within you what is your hidden talent within and how can you use that to you know help you navigate navigate your life whether it be healing your psychological emotional spiritual wounds or going after the things you really want to achieve in your life and it also can allow us to focus on valuing our own individuality at this time as well also you know jupiter being in the second house allows us to be happy with the things that we possess right now so yeah this can be clothes money and other things a car a house but it also gives us the power to kind of like gain more self-esteem and confidence through increasing our possessions and our money or time or other resources so some of you will be more focused on you know increasing your um logical perspective your spiritual awareness where others of you you know may use this energy to sort of like increase your material possessions and that's fine as well as long as we stick to the ethics and things and stuff like that so yeah sorry that's just you know my personal opinion about ethics you know <laughs> like it, i'm not telling you what to do but you know that's what my advice to be you know ethical in your pursuits of using your inner values right now and going after the things that you want because you know negatively with jupiter in the second house it can make us you know 
do whatever it takes right now whether it be stealing and lying to get the material possessions or get whatever it is that we want we can be forceful with our inner values pushing them on other people right now you know not respecting that they think differently from us so we just have to be careful so practically speaking you know as i said this energy can bring sudden changes in our belief systems our philosophy and we can sort of like break free into the alternative rounds in an unconventional way and especially you know there can be revolutional news in technology and there's been a lot with ai and everything coming out um, in the past year and so and there can be you know social movements that stand up for you know collective justice and things like that people in general can feel the stronger urge to break free from limitations and embrace new ways of thinking and living on the world the materialistic level it can sort of like impact global trends as i said it can bring advancements in science technology medicine and in our economic systems as well so this can be for good or bad you know so there can be a sudden shift and i mentioned this on the mars conjunct saturn video where we're going to all the aspects that saturn's making for the rest of the year so you know that video is going to be good for all of the year as well and so will this video so um if you want to check out whether you're listening to it on you know a podcast platform or you know on one of the streaming video platforms so anyway it allows us to have breakthrough in our sort of like inventions to do with financial so whether in our banking systems and stuff as well also in our societal structures especially the ones that challenge tradition you know systematic breakdown because what we're seeing now is that people are becoming more aware and obviously right now our growth is stunted as a collective because what we need to focus on as individuals is healing our you know psychological emotional and spiritual pain on the individual level and this is how we convey the our vibrations with positive thoughts but in order to do that we have to take positive actions to allow positive thoughts so it's kind of like a circle and a paradox but this energy in the 28th degree of Aries wants us to reform our political systems our financial systems it wants revolutions in all areas of our lives especially in the second house the ways that we go about you know world leaders government spending public resources accumulating public resources and also you know the ways that we go about sort of like um, spreading the wealth and um you know there can be a, a say cup of established power dynamics and like i said a lot of major elections especially in the usa which kind of like governs not governs the world but you know it's kind of like the market the west is the market leader and um, america's like the hub at the moment and in the uk there has to be a general election as well by the end of um, january next year as well so you know the masses there's a lot of rebellion from the masses where like we're tired of this crap so there couldn't be something big more protests that is wanting the system to change because until when the system changes because it is broken the world systems are broken and this is not fear mongering it's like we keep on trying you know you've got a crack on your wall and yeah we can put wallpaper over it or put a picture over it we can't see the crack but the crack is still there and this is all we're doing if we're injecting money and resources into the systems as they are we're only ever going to get out of the systems what we put into them what we need to do is to change the system and obviously that's a radical thing that needs to happen but this is what we sort of like need and the masses people may protest to you know and there's a lot of protests that have been going on over the years and stuff and especially over the past two to three years as well across the world so psychologically it can make us feel more restless more excited want to be liberated from tradition and constraints that hold us back we may experience more creativity on the individual level more rebelliousness and impulsiveness as well so it's important to channel this energy constructively to avoid repercussions and conflicts and making vast decisions that you regret such as you know spending your rent money on drink alcohol and drugs and then you've got no money to pay for the roof over your head or your bills and stuff so the ways that we are disillusioned with the world can come up and right now as well you know years in years out the government's promised us this and that i'm talking from a uk perspective and we do get some changes there have been changes you know there have been changes in you know diversity laws and stuff like that you know we are making progress but at the moment because as individuals we're so lost in our you know psychological um emotional and spiritual 
it's a trauma that we need to be resolved and this is you know until when we start dealing it with things on the individual level we're going to see the increase in you know discontent in the world so negatively there can be um a sort of like how can I explain it? Because the Sabian symbol of the 28th degree is a large disappointed audience, this brings to our attention that despite the potential for breakthroughs and innovations, there are feelings of, you know, disillusionment because of unmet expectations, as I said, and there can be, you know, setbacks in personal goals, um, societal projects, we've got a lot of unfinished projects, you know, the public services, the potholes in the roads, this is what we like to complain about in the UK, and the structures are breaking, so there can be sort of like also content creators and activism movements that we have we've been a lot there's been a lot of protests in the past 10 to 15 years a lot of promises from governments as i said but a lot of collective movements have failed to meet anticipated outcomes like in 2012 we had this big mayan energy shift in the spiritual community that was meant to uplift the world and um what i've seen is that yeah we have become more aware about mental and spiritual health problems but because we haven't done that shadow work you know we try and avoid we we can use spiritual and even astrology as a tool to avoid facing our problems and use spiritual terminology which is called spiritual bypassing or you know to kind of avoid facing up to our sadder sides our personal self-destructive habits it, we can easily see other people's faults and we blame we can see what's the wrong we can blame you know the patriarchy and the unfair governments and stuff but what this energy wants us to do is what can we do because uranus is the first house energy is what we can do as individuals to help our world become a better place so yeah the 28th degree of aries it symbolizes the collective consciousness or public opinion so in that you know we have become disillusioned with change and we're dissatisfied with the world and this is shown by the mass protests and you know the average fact of you know most of us are very downtrodden in our mindset and stuff so this alignment of jupiter conjunct uranus wants us to build resilience and to be flexible in the face of uncertainty it pushes us to embrace change even if it means confronting our sad ourselves looking at the ways that we go wrong our self-destructive thoughts and how habits you know and toxic ways of relating to ourselves and others and this is not to shame or guilt anyone we you know we have to seek out the tools that we need whether it be a therapist a podcast whatever do what we can if we're you know physically and psychologically able to you know change to be the change we want to see in the world and this saying is a cliche but this is what we really need to do and we need to be open to new perspectives and know that it's okay for people to follow different spiritual practices religion that are different to us the motto is you know do no harm to self and others allowing each other to be who we are but also respecting each other's collective rights to feel safe in our communities and stuff as well it wants us to sort of like be like the phoenix that you know burns our house down and rise from the ashes of disillusionment into you know the newness of the innovative energy that you know jupiter and uranus conjuncting aries can give us so on the spiritual esoteric level because aries is the first sign of the zodiac as i said it represents new beginnings covers and assertiveness and um, jupiter is the planet of growth and expansion and uranus is the planet of innovation sudden change so this is a you know this fiery energy of aries wants us to sort of like on the spiritual level to have a profound awakening of consciousness and this energy supports that it pushes us to break free from old patterns and limitations that have been holding us back and embrace our true spiritual um, path with courage and determination you know not all of us are here to be spiritually aware you know i believe we have to go through more levels of assistance and experiences to grow so it's not just growth on the spiritual level it's growth on the personal level as well professional level
level as well so it allows us and sparks an increased sense of intuition and connection to higher realms and energy this can like bring us revelations as well or just allow us to logically think um, about our problems in a way we've never thought about it before and break free from things that habits that even if we've been doing them for 20 50 years you know it, this energy allows us to have this kind of radical shift this radical change you know because Aries is bold and adventurous and pioneering energy encourages us to step into our own power and take bold steps forward and Jupiter you know here magnifies the revolutionary energy of Uranus so it just allows us to you know change our personal beliefs and how we believe societal structures you know a lot of us will question the system and acknowledge that yeah the system that we all live under may be causing problems in our life but our individual personal habits whether it be the our thought habits our the things that we do in the day-to-day basis also makes up who we are and you know makes up for the conflict in the world so as i said looking at the ways that we can change creatively encourages us to tap into our creative potential fiercely pushing boundaries and exploring new ways to you know express our creativity whether it be writing poetry painting gaming dancing chanting jumping doing yoga tai chi you know just podcasting creating music coding whatever it is that really lights a fire that really turns you on you know it allows us to you know have artistic breakthroughs and take first perspectives challenge the norm and inspire others through what you know our creativity so again we can inspire people through our content creation whether it be podcasts youtube videos creating documentaries or anything else that allows yourself and others to heal through creative expression basically emotional level it can stir up a whirlwind of emotions so a lot of emotions can come to the surface right now and we can have intense feelings of excitement impatience and restlessness and we can one minute feel happy and then one minute feel depressed so you know this pushes us to seek new experiences a new way of handling our emotions and stepping into our authentic self-expression it really wants us to embrace change with our whole heart you know do it with our chest as we say you know do you with your chest while also embracing other people's boundaries you know letting go of your fears being open to the fact that you know life will be uncertain at sometimes you know or all the time as well sort of like giving us the power to feel the pain feel the fear and do it in a way and just welcome the unknown with open arms because sometimes we want to know I've been guilty of it. Why? Why? Why does this happen? How is this going to happen? So me the way, give me all the tools and resources now, then I'll do it. But this energy challenges us to make do with the things that we got and to have build our faith using our intuition to build more resilience and our practical actions to, you know, make our dreams come true. And this is how we can emerge stronger after this transit and, you know, become more aligned with our true personal expression and our true purpose in life. Positively, in summary, it allows for us to have sudden breakthroughs and being more innovative. It can lead to new opportunities and experiences. It can make us feel more free as we break free from our existing limitations and embrace change. And we can just have a stronger desire for independence and freedom right now. And this pushes us to take risks to get out of our comfort zones and explore new paths. But negatively, it can make us reckless and impulsive and um, do hasty things without considering the consequences. So what I was saying earlier about spending money allocated for paying our rent or bills and just adding to you know our sort of like uncertainty so doing things that can guarantee your uh, you know stability right now is the best use of this energy as well and to follow a consistent course of action which can be hard to do because of the sense of restlessness that Uranus can bring and unpredictability but the best use of this energy is to maintain a sense of balance and be mindful to radically change your life and be open to innovation and dare to take the opportunities that you know Jupiter and Uranus is offering us as well taking time to reflect on our actions before we dive headfirst into new things 
you know making a plan looking at the pros and cons and all that you want to do right now you know giving yourself enough of the space to think as well and to break free from routines and relationships that are holding you back and just to embrace change in a more strategic way because a lot of the times we want to change and we can just you know not make a plan so we're just always going round and round in circles whereas if we write things down and know that change is something we have to build in to our lives every day and whatever it is we're recovering because we're all at the of something knowing that recovery from an addiction or your addictions is something that we you know we have to work on daily so this is why I say we are never healed we are always healing and it's important and, and you know this is a message I give to myself as well because it's important to know that you know healing is a lifelong journey it's more easier rather than seeing life as a destination viewing it as a sort of like um, journey and you know being open to unexpected opportunities and being willing to take calculated risks which are risks that you think about and that align with your long-term goals so yeah I know I've said this many times but with this energy the key phrase is striking a balance between embracing change and avoiding impulsive decisions actions and to do this it's important to do things that help you to stay grounded in reality and to reflect and by doing this by building your self-awareness this can lead to exciting opportunities and um, for growth without sort of like falling victim, succumbing to scattered energy and a lack of focus that can, you know, lead to us wasting this potent once, not once in a lifetime, you know, it can happen on average, but, you know, if we live to the average age that science says we live to, then we can experience this about five to seven times in our life, but it's like a rare opportunity because it happens once every 14 years. So if you think about 14 years ago, you may have had something good happen out of the blue, but this is a call for you to use this energy in a more intentional way. So now I'm going to talk about the karmic meanings and lessons and the past life implications of Jupiter's um, conjunction to Uranus. So yeah, as I said, this time um, of Jupiter conjunct Uranus can bring restlessness and we can just dislike restriction right now. So we can dislike anyone that gets in our way, any sort of like uh, laws that gets in our way right now as well. So, you know, we can be more likely to break laws or break free from the things that are holding us back. But it can also give us a deep respect for knowledge as well. And we can really thrive by combining our very fairy idealism right now with our intellectual reasoning to so blending our logical brain with our you know more intuitive side as well and um sort of like going after things that are new if you're open to going after the new over the coming year you know over the next 14 years to when this transit happens again you know the things that we sort of like place our energy on right now can really come through yeah if we're open to learning new things from on expected sources so from people you know especially friends you know we can learn a lot from our friends and the ways that we cooperate in groups right now as well some of you may have sudden opportunities to travel this can be work or you may decide you know i'm going to book a holiday or just go away even if it's just breaking from your normal routine going for a walk and as i said this travel may not be physical a lot of you would do mental or you know spiritual intuitive travel pay attention to your dreams your daydreams and your thoughts right now as well it can also allow us to going back to university trade school or setting up our own business and um, attending training courses as well upgrading our professional skills as well also it allows us to profit in the areas of business especially when it comes to science and technology as well so how can you use you know scientific and technological alternative you know methods sort of like um, you know quantum physics and metaphysics and stuff it doesn't have to be traditional you know what we see traditional um, science and medicine and stuff like that so it allows us to sort of like engage in progressive 
occult thinking as well, new thought thinking as well, learning the power of positive thinking and action right now, spending time doing Tai Chi or yoga, sort of like allowing us to be unconventional in the way that we go about setting up a business. This energy wants us to sort of like think outside of the box and think and act for ourselves and be original and allow our inner genius to shine as well. Um, We may feel more generous towards our friends as well and encouraging ourselves and others to sort of like, you know, be our best selves right now. And, you know, right now we can just have a focus, as I said, and doing things that can uplift ourselves, our community, our children, our friends and our communities. And some politicians, once again, may reform. We can do, a, you know, as I said in earlier, we may we want to reform the systems and this energy supports that as well. It wants us to bring in new political philosophies and, you know, rules and stuff. So, again, we can see, you know, changes on the worldly level in that. And, um, you know, this energy wants us ultimately to oppose, to change, to establish the traditional um, way of doing things. And this can be, you know, collectively or in our individual lives. So it's a really potent energy. Although this is only lasting for about, you know, two to three weeks, the effect of this and what we do over those weeks, and especially on the 21st of April, can really, you know, have long term repercussions, you know. Um, and we can also, you know, bring unexpected people in our lives, alternative thinking people, but I talk more about that when I talk about relationships and stuff. So yeah, back to the karma, I went off a tangent a bit there again <laughs> as well. But you know, the energy of unpredictability and all of that. And so yeah, anyway, so it wants us to, you know, open up our mind, as I said, when these two come together, Jupiter and Uranus, uh, you know, a powerful cosmic energy is unleashed. It rarely happens as I said and it happens in the 28th degree and it's not a critical degree like the 29th but it's in the third to last degree of Aries so this symbolises endings and new beginnings as I said it, it pushes us to let go of the things that no longer serve our spiritual and intellectual growth you know the things that keep us small you know it wants us to get rid of those and allow ourselves to you know not you know to sign our lights instead of dimming our individual lights you know so it wants us to embrace profound transformations to seek higher truths on our spiritual journey the connection with the fullness pervital um, and ascetical bones wants us to work on the ways that we remember things it you know so again it wants us to look into our memories change our perception and envision the way that we see the world it wants us to um, expand our consciousness expand our perspectives because a lot of the time you know perception is the way that you as an individual view the world because of your experiences but perspectives is actually you know the seeing the world and people for what they are so a lot of us fall in love with potential and that's good you know it's good to see the good in others but it comes a time when you have to think wow is this falling in love with potential keeping me away from actual reality you know so this energy wants us to learn karmic lessons that are related to expanding our consciousness releasing outdated thought patterns addictions and the toxic ways of relating to ourselves and others as well and just embrace radical change this energy is to use to get yourself out of your comfort zone get yourself out of your rut and to you know do the things that you need to do to um, become more your authentic self and to step into your own power fiercely you know and past lives where we had to break free from conforming to other people's beliefs and challenge traditional beliefs can come to our consciousness and this can be unconsciousness like the the lessons that you go through right now can be resolved around or pushing you to break away from living up to your parents or society's expectations and to challenge the things that you think that you know and to initiate change in your life that is you know not only good for you but for us as a collective so now I'm going to talk about the aspects that Jupiter and Uranus um, make when they're conjunct. Okay, so Mars is making a set style to Jupiter, so this allows us to be more enthusiastic and assertive and have more courage and give us that go-getter attitude like, I don't care if my life's crap, I'm going to still, you know, go ahead and do the things that I need to do to, you know, 
build myself confidence, love, understanding and forgiveness and especially, you know, compassion and empathy to others as well. But negatively, this energy can add to the impulsive in our actions and words and this can add to the conflicts because we can say and do things that disrespect other people's boundaries or overspend and stuff like that, you know, things that are go against us feeling uh, and being physically or emotionally secure right now as well so we need to sort of like um be mindful be thoughtful in our words and actions and watch out for our temper flaring up because this energy can just make us get really angry out of nowhere so it's really important to be mindful right now mars also makes a set style to uranus so again this allows us with being flexible original and being quicker in our thinking but again it adds to that impatience as well so it's just best it's a reminder to use this energy you know this I don't want to say it's not once in a lifetime but this rare energy to do what we need to do to get ahead in our lives you know and Uranus also makes a semi sex style to Chiron right now so again it supports us looking for unconventional ways to heal our spiritual emotional and psychological um, wounds and have breakthroughs in self awareness and personal growth it allows us to embrace ourselves and loves ourselves for who we are to find unconventional alternative solutions to our old wounds and challenges encourages us and supports us in thinking outside of the box and exploring new paths towards healing our lives and changing transforming what needs to be transformed in our life you know and by embracing the unexpected and being open to alternative approaches we can tap into our inner resilience and use the power of innovation for profound um, healing so now i'm just going to talk about the stellium that happens so there's a four point stellium between mercury venus chiron and the north node which has a 21 percent orb so it's kind of strong so a stellium in a transit chart refers to a cluster of three or more planets or astrological points that are in close range of each other in the same zodiac sign or house this can sort of like intensify the energy of the planets involved and brings a sort of um, concentrated influence on our individual lives at the time so positively it can increase our productivity clarity and purpose it can also bring about opportunities for transformation and breakthroughs in specific areas but negatively tension can come up from overwhelming intensity that can cause stress anxiety or feeling burdened by the pressure of concentrated influence and this can lead to issues of burnout increased emotional sensitivity and challenges in finding balance amidst the strong planetary energies in terms of the four point stellium that's happening between mercury venus and chiron and the north node the role in the constellation of pisces when this happens so it's a powerful alignment between mercury the planet of communication venus the planet of love in the values and relationships and personal possessions chiron the planet of healing and transformation and the north node which you know impacts our destiny and purpose and of course you know jupiter that's all about abundance expansion luck and change and breakthroughs that is represented by uranus as well as um innovation as well so this allows us to have powerful energy shifts in our beliefs values and personal growth and this is 100% what I recommend you use this energy for to push you out of that rut that's what I'm going to be using it for whether it be through meditation chanting drumming going for a walk walking barefoot hugging trees you know it allows us to heal deep wounds and sometimes for some of you especially those with strong Jupiter Uranus 12th house 9th house um, 11th house or 5th house house energy in your chart you know planets in those houses and natal charts as well or even in your tangent charts it allows us to really be open to tapping deep within yourself and letting go and just embracing who you are as an individual and just forgiving yourself for the past and allowing yourself to open up to the newness of a better future some of you can get significant revelations as i said through dreams or thinking or writing things down or just allowing yourself to be open to other people's words and perspectives right now and this energy really pushes us to you know push us to be our best selves on the individual level and the collective um, level it supports change in the ways that we see the world you know it expands alternative thinking jupiter's with uranus so that's what it's doing it's expanding alternative ways of looking at the world and ourselves and working with others as well 
but it's important to you know use self-awareness to stop ourselves from being overwhelmed by the intensity of this stellium and the other aspects and to engage in self-reflection and self-care and to seek support from trusted individuals who can help you manage the stress and emotional psychological and spiritual sensitivity that comes up at this time by embracing the opportunities for growth and breakthroughs while also staying grounded in your own sense of values and setting your own intentions is key to making the most of this powerful planetary alignment on the 21st of April. So now I'm going to talk about the fixed stars and how they influence Jupiter's conjunction to Uranus. So we've got Jupiter making a semi-set star to Capella and all of these are within a one degree orb. So the tagline um, is love and movement. So this allows us to enhance the dynamic energy of love and a sense of adventure but also adds to the restlessness that we can go through right now. Jupiter makes a semi-square to Mizam, so this is sort of like a challenging aspect. So this is, wants us to have our say, supports us in speaking our mind. It can strengthen our assertiveness, our communication skills, and the drive for us to express ourselves more boldly. Jupiter also makes a contraparallelism at the same time. So parallels and contraparallels is all to do with declination. So misms contraparallel. So this means that Jupiter misms are sort of like on the opposite declination sides of the equator, but they're still you know conjuncting and doing their things. But it's the extra added of the fact that they're also contraparallel at this time. So it doubly fuses that energy of us to be assertive so this is the time to really step up into your i don't want to say your best self but your higher selves yeah Jupiter also makes a contraparallel to Sirius. So this is when the mundane can become sacred. So this is about looking at your life, the boring things in your life, the routine things in your life, and making every not making everything spiritual, but making everything have a purpose. So yeah, you know, you may think watching streaming shows or gaming is not, you know, conducive to spiritual growth, but actually if this allows you to switch off and to have some fun and some time out, then that mundane thing becomes sacred because it's it, it's helping you reach a bigger purpose so it adds a touch of spirituality and significance to our lives it allows us to tap into that more spiritual and open-minded part of our personality you know jupiter also makes a semi-set style to fat so the tagline for this is a quest to adventure so it allows us to travel mentally or physically to have a sense of wonder to want to explore to try new things and embrace challenges that come up fearlessly jupiter also makes a try to then bowler and this allows us to go against society to go against social norms and conforming to whatever else it is that everybody else wants us to do and actually be rebellious and stand up for ourselves and be like you know i don't care what you want me to do i'm going to do what i need to do but in a respectful way it allows us to become detached from people pleasing as well and push boundaries as well as we you know go after being an individual and being more authentic and um, jupiter also connects with Raz Agu and this is the tagline is the desire to heal the wound so it allows us to heal past wounds and find resolution in challenging situations. Jupiter also makes a semi-set style to Balatrix and also makes a parallel to Aldebaran so Balatrix influence allows us to gain access to our shadow you know everyone's got a dark side our shadow traits the bits of our personality that we dislike others pointing out and dislike even acknowledging ourselves it allows us to face our shadow selves and our shadow behaviors and thoughts with more integrity and allows us to integrate our shadow selves facing our inner fears and doubts head on and this can support the breakthroughs that this energy wants us to achieve over the next you know 12 to 14 years Abidon tagline is um success through integrity so it wants us to have be more ethical in the ways we go about achieving our goals whether it be in the workplace in our personal life in our relationships whatever it highlights the importance of us staying true to our values and principles and wants us to act with honesty and supports us in being authentic once again so a lot of energy is actually supporting what you know jupiter conjunction to uranus wants us to do out the influence promises that if we 
you know, are willing to become more honest and ethical in our actions, then this can bring favourable outcomes into our lives, you know, and it wants us to be, have like sort of like ethical fortitude, which is resilience, you know, other people may say, no, you're wrong, you must listen to me, you're out of your mind, whatever it is, you know, this energy supports us in, you know, standing up for ourselves. Uranus makes a semi style to Capilla, so again, this tagline is love of movement, so this allows us to um, sort of like embrace new experiences, keep up with the pace to move quickly to quickly break our habits so i said earlier that you know sometimes we move fast with this change and that's true but also this energy supports us in you know making those quick effective changes and letting go of habits that we've even had for a lifetime if we're open to it and are willing to do the daily work to sustain to keep these changes you know because without daily action we will revert back to habits you know that's why the core habits to state the obvious or anything but you know so yeah jupiter makes a semi-square with mizam again you know supports us in standing up for ourselves being more confident in asserting our opinions as well Again, Uranus is also in the contra parallel with Mizam, so this doubly supports us in expressing our thoughts, but also, again, can lead to us feeling misunderstood by others and brings challenges that we need to overcome in, you know, expressing ourselves clearly. Also, there's a semi-set style between Uranus and Fat, so again, it allows us to seek out new experiences and adventure as well, and have a spark for more um, excitement in our life and breaking free from them societal norms and then Belolas and Bellatrix influence with Uranus again supports us facing our shadows and breaking free from our own self-destruction as well. Because again, a lot of the time we can blame external circumstances and there may be external circumstances circumstances that add to our inner pressures but just by getting to know yourself on those deeper levels and confronting your inner fears and your shadows the parts of you that you hate to acknowledge or feel safe for acknowledging and taking the time to heal all your wounds jupiter conjunction to uranus can be a real you know powerful time for you so now i'm going to talk about the saving degrees and how they positively and negatively affect jupiter conjunct uranus which are both in the 28th degrees of aries and as i said um earlier because i've talked about them a bit already and um, the 28th degree of aries rules the funnets pivotal optical bones in the human body and has the saving symbol a large disappointed audience and mars is in the 29th degree of aquarius and rules the left tibia in the human body and has the saving symbol a butterfly emerging from a chrysalis as I said, you know, a lot of disappointment can come up with both Jupiter and Uranus in the 28th degree. Whether it's disappointment from not being able to grow in the ways that, you know, Jupiter calls for us to grow or to be uh, individuals in the way that Uranus calls us to be individual. But this saving, you know, energy acts as a motivator to push our boundaries creatively to you know finally be who we are you know maybe you're in your 40s in your 50s and you think you know i can never make the changes well you can if you're willing it's going to be harder because you know you've got 20 or 30 or 40 decades of habits to break through but you know this energy wants us and calls for us to be open to the fact that if we want to change we can and you know this planetary energy supporting us doing that as well and we may face resistance from others in our bid to change you know other people may be like no i like things the way they are and this can cause frustration and in relationships and get in the way of your progress um, it brings the test of our patience and resilience and that's what we're going to need we're going to have to build our inner resilience to overcome you know the challenges that come up and mars in the 29th degree of aquarius supports and encourages us taking those bold actions towards our personal growth and change it provides us the energy to have more courage and determination to break free from our limitations fearlessly and the symbology of you know the butterfly emerging from its um chrysalis symbolizes you know the beauty behind allowing ourselves to change from one state to another allowing ourselves to be open to rebirth and growth it prompts us to embrace our true selves and step into our power with confidence and grace it suggests a time of great change innovation and transformation it's a period where we're called to push boundaries challenge norms and break free from constraints that are holding us back and um 
while you know our initial attempts at change you know you may be a people pleaser people are used to you doing everything that you know they want you to do and so our initial attempts at change and personal breakthroughs can be met with resistance and disappointment from those around us but for willing to stand up for ourselves and take action you know ultimately they may get on board or they may never get on board but you know this symbology of mars being in the 29th degree of aquarius offers a beacon of hope and you know cause of us to just embrace who we are and our values fearlessly despite what other people may say you know you know as mama cast sounds make your own type of music this energy supports us in making our own type of music okay so now i'm going to finish up by talking just how it's going to affect our co-worker our friendship and family relationships and our hookup relationships and stuff as well so in family relationships it can lead to greater bonding as we you know explore new activities together and this can create an uplift in our family dynamic and give us a you know opportunities to grow as a family so if there's family secrets or things you don't talk about this energy supports transformation in your family and doing things together as a family as well but negatively it can make us act impulsive and all for confidence which can lead to conflicts in the family if we don't manage this energy effectively so it's mindful for us to balance desire for adventure while also maintaining stability in family relationships and you know don't spend all the family money on <laughs> on I don't know, reckless adventure and then you you know you ain't got money to pay for your bills and stuff like that i use that example because it's an easy one so in terms of friendship it can make us more unconventional and want to be more sort of like um, alternative in the way we go about the friendship the way you socialize together and um, encourages personal growth and freedom of expression in friendship groups and allowing each of us to be individual and supporting each of us creativity but negatively it can bring a strain especially if we don't be honest and openly communicate and be flexible because as i said you know some members of the group friendship group may want to do things that breaks the tradition of the friendship group and this could be like no we always do things this way i don't want to do things you know new things we always go for a walk on sunday or we always you know go bowling or clubbing on a saturday night whatever it is you do so you know there can be resistance to unexpected changes and this can lead to um you know conflict as well so it's important to embrace being spontaneous and nurture mutual respect and understanding for each other and giving each other the space and grace to change in co-worker relationship it allows you to take on new projects together to feel more motivated and take risks and expand your skills within the workplace um, but negatively it can lead to unpredictability and change in co-worker relationships and this can lead to problems with newness and stuff you know the best use of this energy is to be unconventional in the ways you go about approaching solving problems and just to be more flexible and open-minded in terms of um, four committed couples it allows us to share new adventures together and support each other's personal growth as well as couple growth you know and be respectful to bringing change into the connection but negatively there can be resistance and some you know this can bring endings not to fear or anything just talking about the negatives what can happen because of unexpected conflicts and people in the relationship uh, may need space and because of an increased need for independence in relationship this can rock the boat breaking the tradition of the things that you guys the normal ways that you guys go about handling problems and being as a unit so it's important to communicate openly practice patience active listening and embrace change to overcome the hurdles you know it's better to bend a little than to break completely so if you want to keep the relationship no one's saying you know don't stand up for yourself but also you know know that it takes two or more to tango so yeah you know be open to meeting each other's needs and open to the fact that these needs of your partner may not be your needs and you know when we say we love someone it's not about doing everything that they want or nothing about that especially if it's in always at the cost of your personal happiness as well but just finding a way to compromise and give each other bits you know to learn each other's love language and to understand you have different love languages and needs and that and respecting that as well so this just allows us to be spontaneous embrace the feel of the moment the excitement and to be light-hearted even with the difficult stuff even when tension comes up to so just take a light-hearted who 
humorous approach to how you go about you know serving these conflicts as well in hookup relationships it can bring unpredictability and change and this can lead to twisting the dynamics and shifting you know your needs and your desires people may want even more independence in their connection as well and it's important to be flexible and honest and find a balance between being spontaneous and being stable or bringing stability in your hookup relationships and, and just being sort of like open to changing them. So yeah, overall, when Jupiter and Uranus conjunct in Aries, this symbolizes a powerful moment for personal growth and social evolution. It signifies a time of liberation and radical transformation, pushing us to step into our own power and embrace change with courage and conviction. The cosmic stance between Jupiter and Uranus and Aries encourages us to think outside of the box, challenge conventions and pave the way to being open to expressing your creativity in a different way, to being more authentic and to express your need for freedom in constructive ways and, and in ways that really bring harmony into your life. And remember, this conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter reminds us that how our actions and thoughts um, have the capacity to shape our destinies and also our relationships as well so this is why it's important to you know manage our emotional psychological and spiritual wounds as we grow into adulthood and also you know to take responsibility to remain physically and emotionally and financially stable as well as um, psychologically and spiritually aware and giving us the time and space to do this and supporting others and doing so and, and never thinking it's too late as long as we're willing to make a strategic plan and this is how we can create a more vibrant and harmonious world for ourselves and the future generations so yeah that's the end of jupiter conjunct uranus 2024 thanks for listening to this take care and see you next time and if you like my content please share it like and subscribe as well bye bye